Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's amazing when you go like, I just watched that and it's already online. It's like, holy shit. Okay, sir, so where are you going? All right, thank you. I think you use the microphone. Put it inside your mouth. And for my next party trip. I'll, I'll let you know how much slack it has because I'll be like, oh. Come on in. It's great talk. He looks like he's in security or something. He has a red shirt on. How far can I go, or do I block the thing, or you got that separately? Yeah, that's separate. Okay. Good. I just don't know what I'm going to do. All right, so I'm Raymond. Um, my handle is Secure Maryland. I'm here to talk about FAST. Um, I, know, I saw you had daughters. Okay, so warn me if they come back in, because I, I, I curse like a sailor, and I'll try to tone it down if the kids come back. Um, I try to be respectful of kids. I have a kid, and I don't like cussing in front of my own kid, but... That doesn't always work. <laughs> um, so welcome to DerbyCon 5. Um, this is my little countdown before my speech. This is my fourth DerbyCon. I missed DerbyCon 1, unfortunately. I didn't think it would be so awesome. And then I'm like, shit, I go. Now it's so awesome. I keep going. I submitted talks three times. I needed something for number three. Only two of them got accepted. So this is my second time speaking. Um, but this is the one you want to watch, right? This is the one you want to be at, right? You want to fast. You want to know what fast is. You want to know all that kind of stuff, right? So we're all in the right room. We don't, we're not here for lock picking or anything else. PowerShell, good. You can close the door so people can't leave, too. I do have donuts. So if you didn't get donuts, you came in late. We got plenty of donuts. Um, so my goal today is to talk about phishing as a service, right? Defining what that means and helping you build your services around a fast type solution. So my goal is to talk to you as if you were both a consultant side of the house and you want to do better services for your clients and also as if you were a client wanting better services from your consultants. Right? So I see both sides of sides of the uh, of the of the goalpost, not no pun intended. I want to make sure that, you know, if you're offering phishing in any of your client engagements if you're a consultant and you offer phishing, I want to make sure you do it better. Right, I want to elevate you to the next pl place where you should be, right? And it, like I said, and if you're a client and you're telling people, please fish me, I want you to understand what that really means, what you really should be getting out of them, and why you should be doing it as a service ongoing and forever, and pay monthly premiums and stuff like that. Sound good? How many of you are consultants? How many of you are on the client side? How many of you are here just for the donuts? me. Um, so here's my little legal disclaimer. Um, I represent a lot of different companies depending on the day and who I'm working for. Some of the companies I represent have nothing to do with this talk. I can't say anything about them. I can't say what I do for them. Some of the companies I own, so they support my talk. I'm a, I'm a horrible boss, though. Um, so uh, it all depends on who I'm representing and stuff. As, as a representative of myself, I'm, I endorse everything in here, right? I want to be talking a lot about vendors and products, and I don't want to sound like a commercial for any one of them. Um, and I want to make sure that it's known that I don't make any money off of any of them. I don't get anything from any of them. I'm not being rewarded to say this company or that company. I, I talk about uh, two vendors the most. Um, one is ThreatSend because I have the most experience with ThreatSim. And the other one will be Fishline, simply because they're a sponsor of DerbyCon. I know very little about Fishline, but I'll throw their name out there since they sponsored DerbyCon and I like DerbyCon. All right. And when your kids come back, let me know because I curse like a sailor. I also mumble and stuff like that. So if you don't understand what I'm saying, raise your hand. And I'll say it again. When you don't understand again, just ignore it. Make, make, make it think. Think to yourself that it was something great. Um, I've been doing InfoSec for about 20-something years, which means I'm old. Um, it's really been a, a passion of mine. I, I started off in the government arena doing really hands-on, geeky stuff and moved up into more of the management, the, the, the bad words management side of the house. But as I grew, 
I became more and more aware of the business side of the house, right? Making things better. Uh, my last talk here at DerbyCon was, so you want to be a pen tester, right? And it wasn't necessarily talking on the technical skill sets that you need to be a pen tester. It was talking more along the side of the business aspect of what you need to be a pen tester. This is going to be a similar talk. Not necessarily how to fish people and how to be a better fisher and get a better template and get creds and stuff like that, but how to make that a better service for what you offer out and what you get in as a client. A couple things you should know about me. First one is I'm lazy, right? If you had any kind of social engineering skills, you probably figured that out just by looking at my physique, right? I'm not up here cut and ripped like this guy up here. He's like, I'll, I'll, I'll work out. And no, I'm lazy. But that's a good thing, right? Because laziness is the mother of all invention, right? It's not necessity. Whoever came up with that quote was a oh shit, right? I didn't make a remote control because it was necessary, right? I made a remote control because I didn't want to get out of my recliner, right? So as a lazy person, I look for ways to make things better and be, you know, a differentiator between my company and other companies, right? So that's what got me down the long, long, long lines of fishing as a service, right? I want to do things that others don't, but I want to do it in such a way that it's so easy to do. I don't have to do any, you know, nifty programming or build my own O days or anything like that, right? And fishing as a service is easy. So even the lazy people like me can do it. I'm certified. I've heard all the CISP jokes already. Uh, I am a CISP. I'm a lot of other things too. Um, so I'm a little certified like accreditations and stuff, but I'm more like this. So if I go off on tangents and rants and stuff and I see shiny squirrels, just let me know and hold me back in. I thought they looked a lot like me actually. I don't I have a, maybe with more hair, but um, one thing that I learned, nobody cares about the presenter, right? You don't want to get on with the talk. So who are you, right? I saw hands saying your consultants. I saw hands that you were saying your clients, right? I want this to be interactive and such, since it's such a small audience, you know, it's Sunday morning, um, not because I'm a bad speaker, um, I hope. <laughs> I want you guys to, you know, ask questions as we go, call bullshit as we go, right? Challenge me, challenge each other, and I'll tell you you're wrong and then throw you out and throw donuts at you. Um, because I'm always right, but that's okay. Um, so ask questions as you go. Hopefully, you want to know a little bit more about fishing, right? Oops, not that kind of fishing, this kind of fishing, right? And particularly fishing as a service, right? Why go after one person and get one credential and get a little bit about the company when you can go after all the fish in the sea? Go after everybody in the company know exactly what they're running and what they're doing, right? Why not? Why narrow it down to one or two people when you can get everybody? Why go after one person when you can go, oh, about time you guys show up. <laughs> no. the, uh, why, why go after one person when you can get, get thousands in the company, right? So at, when you do with fishing as a service, it's so easy to cast that net wide and figure out who to go after afterwards. And it also gives the clients more data to learn about how they can do their um, training and how they can do their controls so they can come, become better, right? Why do we fish? It works, right? I don't have to worry about firewalls. I don't have to worry about antivirus. Well, sometimes antivirus. I don't have to worry about any you know, physical controls they put in between me and the person. They will click it, right? Java, Adobe, all that kind of good jazz. That makes it easy for me to fish. So why not, right? There's tons of vulnerabilities for all those, right? If I can grab some credentials and I can validate that those credentials exist and, and, and work, I'm you, I'm on the network as you, I don't have to worry about um, cracking passwords or anything like that. So this is all the reason we had a fish. This is these kind of the obligatory slides that we had to put in here, right? Some of the common tools for phishing, right? We have the SC toolkit, have to put that one first, it's DerbyCon after all. Um, Fishing Frenzy. Uh, Fishing Frenzy is pretty good. I don't know how many people have used it before. It gives you the ability to build templates that comes with some good templates on, on its own. It's got a lot of promise, but it's not there yet. And when I mean not there yet, I mean it's not mature enough for fishing as a service yet. Um, Icehole. Icehole is very good just to send out a couple messages and, and get things back. Um, SPF. Um, Adam and I think is the other guy's name was Eric. They did a talk on that the other day. 
Um, this is one of my new favorites because it will do the harvesting, the emails, and everything, and the reports all from one thing. And you know, being a lazy person, it's a lot easier to just do one tool instead of two tools. Um, it's a lot less typing on the keyboard, so that's always good. Um, and then another one I wanted to mention was Lucy. Um, and we're going to talk about a little bit more about Lucy later. So all these toolkits and everything, right? What do they have in common? Anyone? So there's a, a link unique to each user. Do all of them have a link that's unique to each user, or do they? Uh... Right. Right. So you know who clicked it, right? Yep. Good. Yep. Right. So you need, you, you get some statistics in phishing frizzing, you get some statistics on who, who clicked it, right? On the other tools, you get a who based on the credentials that were harvested, right? So if I ran SPF and I sent it out to 50 people, I know who clicked it because I, I can see that it was Raymond in the email address, right? And then the password. And if I sent it out to Raymond, then that had to be the person that clicked it, right? I can make that correlation, right? But I don't know the 49 other people that I sent it to, I don't know what happened to it on their desktop, right? Just talking from a from a tool set, I don't know if they, they, they threw it in their, if it made it to their inbox. I don't know if it was in their spam folder. I don't know if it was sent anywhere else to somebody to say, hey, look at this. And is this garbage? Did I click on it and things not work? Because that happens, you know. Um, it, uh, in, the, in the SPF talk, they were talking about, you know, sending out bogus or a bad phishing attempt when it was the other client information and people were still clicking it. Um, but one of these things that the, 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 these all have in common is they make me look sexy. Right? I try to get this guy in all my slides. I found him one time when I was doing the USB rubber ducky talk and I think he's great so he makes all my slides. But they make lazy people like me look sexy, right? I can do a, a consistent model that's repeatable, right? And when you're in a consulting world, that's very important, consistent and repeatable. Why is that important? That keeps costs down. We keep costs down, profits go up, right? When it only costs me $100 to do this fishing attempt versus $1,000 to do a fishing attempt versus $10,000 to do a fishing attempt, when I make that money, I'm getting, now, now I'm clearing more and more money, right? So I need consistency and repeatability of my fishing attempts. You get that out of fast. Right? We're going to be talking about the, the tools and the vendors and what we can do as we grow this. So that's one key thing. You get that immediately right out of fast. The second thing they have all in they have in common is they allow you to grab shells and they allow you to grab credentials. Right? They allow you to pop boxes. Great. Right? How does that help your clients as a consultant? How does grabbing a shell help your clients? Anyone? It's supposed to be interactive. You're supposed to be awake. I throw donuts. Good. I like that answer. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, we're gonna we're gonna address this in, a couple, in about three or four more slides. But I like that. You know, getting budgets good. It helps them. You know, it depends. It really depends on the goal of the engagement, right? And I'm finding that, in reason, I want to push fast. As, you know, fishing as a service, and why I'm getting behind it, is because I've played the other side of the fence. I've had to deal with you know. Um, running security programs throughout my life. And I know the pains of running a security program, right? So, go ahead. Just, it also reminds everyone that popping the box is the secondary issue. The, 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 the problem is still the problem. The, fish, the phishing is the problem. The people are still the problem. That was an ancillary benefit to that problem, right? So, they're all great, but no, that's not my but. Just clear for clarifications. <laughs> so, shortcomings, right? Where they, where these tools fall flat, you have to configure them, right? No big deal. Usually, four or five lines. You know, with set it's a one one six four two. You know, so I'm not talking about a lot of different things when you're actually running the tool sets, 
right? If you modified phishing frenzy, I would say that's a lot more work up front, right? Than just running set or SPF as an example, right? So you got to get them configured and working. You also need to do all the other things that come along with it, right? Register the domain names. How many domain names are you going to register for this client? One, ten, 100, right? You have to do stuff that's enticing to them to click and, the, and to come back to you, right? So you have to make sure that we have enough information from them, right? And they lack statistics, right? Fast gives you the statistics very easily, right? This is my the one that I wanted to hold off to. So during the SPF, one of the questions was, so why do pay? Why do people pay for phishing tests if they know that someone will click it and they'll get owned? Right? That's a big question. Why even pay for this? Right? We heard a, we heard an answer here: budgetary concerns. It helps me get budget. Right? Well, this is where I have to start my little rant. I'm sorry. Um, we have to understand where things are going and what things are doing. So I, I broke my rant down into the three things. One is overload it, right? Our clients are overloaded. It's not, you know, sometimes it is for budgetary concerns. Sometimes it is for compliance check boxes and that's all they want. They need a third party to tell them this because they need to click that off and that's okay because they need that checkbox. Otherwise they don't get budget or otherwise they get fined or whatever. That's an acceptable answer for why they would want to do phishing and, and, and why they would pay for it even knowing that they'll get popped, right? Another thing is they may be trying to do the right thing, right? That was perfect timing. I love that. <laughs> I got to try that more often. They may be trying to do the right thing. No. So they may be trying to do security awareness training. They may be trying to set up their, their, their perimeter security control so that things can't get out if you did click it, right? They may want to know what is working, what is not working. They need, they need your help to better plan on how to fix all that crap, right? And without good statistics, it's hard for them to do that, right? Was that one person that clicked an anomaly and only one person that was the only time everybody, anybody ever clicked? Was it enough to give me a shell? Yes. But was that a rare? Is that person always click things? You know, do I need to fire that person? Because every time I send them a phishing attack, do they click? You know, my second rant, red team, blue team, offense, defense. Um, I think that's all bullshit. So, you know, call me out on that later. Uh, we are too offensively focused and we're too defensively focused. To me, it's all purple, right? And it's not because I'm a Ravens fan, right? It's because... To, you know, as of, you know, since since I brought the Ravens, you know, we, we look at Ray Lewis, right? Whether or not he was a criminal, that's a different story. But he was a great linebacker. He was a great defenseman. Why was he a great defenseman? It wasn't because he watched defensive tapes, right? It's because he watched offenses and he studied the offense all the time. So he said, I know how you're going to attack me. I know how you're going to run the ball. I know how you're going to throw the ball. I'm going to tackle you, right? So we need to know both sides of the fence to be effective. You get that out of fast. Third thing I want to rant about really quickly is business acumen. I grew up through technology and very geeky and hands-on, and, and all my reviews were, did you do good, did you program well, did you blah, 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 right? Everything was technically focused. Then I started getting into leadership and management, and then all my yearly reviews, there was this little thing called business acumen. Did they understand the business of what's happening, right? We as um, security consultants are probably the weakest in that arena. We don't understand the business and what's driving the business for our clients. When we do FAST, that will help get enough statistics and stuff for them so that they can take it back to their business teams and do a better justification for things like budget and controls and stuff like that. All right. Quit the ranting. Get on to what we're talking about. Fishing as a service. Thank you for listening to all that. Um, I know that's the boring part of the talk, but sometimes you have to get stuff on your chest. Um, so looking up as a service, right? 
the generic definition for as a service, and this is me paraphrasing, equipment owned by a service provider and users are charged to use it. Simple enough, right? Somebody else owns a computer and they say, you want to use part of my compute? Go ahead. Somebody owns an email server, they say, you want to use some of my email? Go ahead. Right? I don't have to worry about anything. I don't have to worry about the structure, the infrastructure, the things like that. You know, from a security perspective, yeah, maybe we do want to worry about how that's all stored and all that kind of stuff. But from a from a a benefit and standing up perspective, I don't have to worry about any of that stuff, right? I pay for Gmail or I sign up for Gmail, I get Gmail. I don't have to worry about it working. They have to worry about it working. Right? So what is fast? This is from the social engineering. The social engineer. It says, allows organizations to determine the baseline for susceptibility to phishing attacks by using simulated real-world scenarios on users, right? We're able to track what people are doing now. We're, we're getting the statistics now of what's happening, right? But more importantly, we're also giving our clients what they really want. Regardless if they know they want it or not, this is what they need, and once you show this to them and you, and, you, and you educate them on this, they want it and want it and want it. I've done several fishing as a service gigs, and it's such an easy resell because once they see it the first time, they're like, they're hooked. It's like crack. I, I just want to go, right? So what do they want? What, what, are, what, are, they, what are they trying to gather, right? They want to see if it can be exploited. We all know the answer is yes, right? They know the answer is yes. So they want to know that, but they want to know a lot more. They want to know the four W's, and they want to know a whole bunch of different stuff. So what are the four W's, right? Who? Who is clicking on my emails, right? The person, the sex, the age, the office, right? Who is clicking on this, right? If I said if I use SPF and I send an uh, email out to 50 people, and a great, great, granted, I love SPF, so I'm not knocking that as a tool. It's a great tool for what it does. Um, I really suggest more people use it and support it, but it's not fast. So if I use SPF and I send out emails to 50 people, I can do you know open source intelligence on those 50 people, and I can get the age, the sex, and everything of those 50 people, right? Relatively easy thing to do, but I'm lazy, so why would I want to do OSINT on 50 people? And why would I want to do it on thousands of people, right? Have you ever tried to fish an organization that has 9,000 people in it, 50,000 people in it, and you need to know the sex and the age and this and that from those 50,000 people? Good luck with that. You know, hopefully the Recon NG as a service comes up quick enough so you can just say, hey, do all this for me. Otherwise, you're not getting statistics and stuff about them, right? They want to know what, right? That's the other W they want. They have the, of the four Ws. They want to know what. What were people using when they clicked it? Did I click that phishing attempt from my phone? Did I click that phishing attempt from home? From the work office? From my a laptop? from a server, from wherever, right? <coughs> I can tell all that when I use fast tools. So I can tell you that you're clicking on it from an Android device in San Francisco. That's important to your clients, right? Can everybody see that? Yeah, get some heads nodding, hopefully. I can tell you everything that's running on that browser when they click it. Java, Adobe, Silverlight, whatever. Right, all useful information when I'm trying to educate our client and help our clients get the proper security controls in place to fix that stuff. Right, third and fourth, when and where. Right, when do they click it? Where do they click it? Um, how useful would it be to go back to your client and say, you know, I sent out a thousand emails. Your Baltimore office, zero clicks. Your DC office, zero clicks. Your California office, a thousand clicks. 
What does that tell you right off the bat? Does that mean Baltimore and D.C. are safe? Safer. Because, you know, your next campaign, maybe they're the clickers. But it tells you that your security awareness training hasn't made it out to California yet. Right? And it tells you to get onto your management out in California and say, WTF, why are you at the beach and not training your folks? Right? This is stuff they need to know. And there's so much, much more, right? The effectiveness of their security awareness training, right? Do I get repeat offenders? What types of emails do this person click? This person clicks on their free coupons for Chick-fil-A. That's me, right? I don't know if everybody knows what Chick-fil-A is, but think of it like a cool kick-ass chicken sandwich, right? If I get coupons for Chick-fil-A and I'm in security, I've been in security forever, I'm clicking that effort. I want free chicken. Right? So I know any phishing attempt like that, don't fish me with Chick-fil-A. Um, I know any phishing attempt that has Chick-fil-A and free food, I'm clicking. Right? You, if you know that about your users, you can say, Raymond, I'll buy you Chick-fil-A. Just don't click on free Chick-fil-A. I'll get you Chick-fil-A once a week, just never click on it again. And I'm sold. Right? It also gives the ability, some of the tools give the ability to, for the people to report phishing right away. So the tool sets have ability to say, I think this is phishing, let me go report it. Right? It, t it tests for things like attachments. It will test for things like exfiltration out of your network. What kind of ports can come out of your network? Right? It's multilingual. You ever try to get phishing frenzy to go Japanese? Chinese? Right? It's a little bit hard. And then you need to you need to have it translated by a real person, not a machine, because you know the, the machines always mess up on the screen. Huh? Can't. <laughs> now I, I would submit that if you use Google Translate, you're still gonna get people to click. <laughs> because they click. But if you you know you need that you need that um that person that says it. And all this can happen without losing the ability to pop them later, right? Nobody says that you can't fast them first, phishing as a service first, and if it's in your contract to pop them and own them, to pop them with something else, right? So let's talk about setting up a fast offering. You can roll your own. I won't roll my own. I'm lazy. If you guys have forgotten that by now, that's too bad. Right? Like I said, you need your domain names, right? You need your email templates. You need your web servers to track the clicks and the exploits. Right? So you need to think about all this stuff if you're trying to roll your own. Right? You need logic to track all the four, the four W's, the who, what, where, when, why. You need ways to track and record where folks are geographically. Right? You need statistics and graphs about everything possible. Right? All doable. And they all have, um, you know, if you have the coding expertise in the time and you're not lazy, sure, you can do it. There are tools like Fishing Frenzy that will give you a baseline to start doing things like that. Um, if you really, really want to look at doing fast on your own, look at Lucy. It's an ISO they throw up and you can, ha it has a lot of what we need to get a fast server, a fast service running. It's not, the end all be all, but it's a start. <sighs> Gotta be an easier way, right? Thank God there is. Um, there are lots of vendors that do this, right? The good thing about the vendors, and this is where I sound like a commercial, I don't want to sound like a commercial. Again, I'm not getting paid by any of these folks, but if they want to pay me later, I will take it. Um, there are folks that do all this for you. Right? But what's the problem with them doing it on their own? Anyone want to guess? Right? They don't know your business. 
is one. And two, they're not, they claim to be security vendors. They're not security vendors. If you look at any one of these products, and I will submit that we can't do it without them because I'm lazy. I don't want to roll my own. I, I, will, I work with them. But they don't understand security. You look on their, their job boards. What, what is it? A programmer. I need a Ruby this. I need a job of that. I need a blah, 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 blah. Why? Because they want to make a better website, right? And they want to make it easier for me to fish from that website, right? They don't know what really is going on from the security perspective. They may have a couple, a few security folks that are kind of driving things, but they're primarily programming shops, right? So them to do it alone, and a lot of companies do use these folks alone. So, you know, Coca-Cola, for example, would go out and buy Fishline or Fish Me or whatever, or threats them and say, scam me once a month, and blah, blah, blah. Why don't our clients like to do it? Right? Why can't Coca-Cola go directly to Fishline and say, I want to set up a service? Same type of problems. They don't have the staff to do all this. Right? They're putting bottles out on the thing. They're formulating formula into, you know, Coca-Cola into those bottles. They have a specialty in their business. They have a core cybersecurity aspect, right? But it's not geared around statistics and, and knowing, right? Would their security personnel know that in month one, when you had five clicks, and in month two, when you have 10 clicks, that it may be that in month two, you're doing a better job, although you had more clicks, right? Maybe you clicked, but you had more people report it too, right? Maybe there's some other statistics. So what I submit is that we work together, right? I use the vendors so that I don't have to set up anything. They do all the templates. I work with them to say your templates suck or you need more, right? So I'm giving them uh, feedback from my engagements and saying, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do this. Um, the good thing that I found so far is that they're young enough in their, um, in their own career path or their own company path that you can influence a lot of change. When you come back and you say, I just fished 9,000 people, and this is what I saw where your product broke down, you used too much Java, you did too much stuff, they'll listen to you and they'll say, okay, I need to do blah, right? They'll work with you on that. And that gets you better deals for the next time you need to do use them to do another phishing campaign, right? So together, we can make a great service offering for our clients, right? We have everything we need. We have the infrastructure to do it. We have all the domains pre-registered. We have all the templates ready to go. We have stuff that we'll do with the web services that will take the statistics. We have everything, right? So if we marry up with one or more of these vendors, we can start providing fast as a service. We, from a consultant side of the house, right? Now, the clients out there, the people that aren't consultants, but a consumer of this, right? You want to look for organizations that have the security expertise, that are working with people like this, that can offer you a fast service because you're going to get a lot more statistics out of it than going to them alone and going to somebody that doesn't use them, right? So it's the marriage of best of both worlds, right? What do we get out of it? We get the ability to add training right off the bat. So how many click something? We can have a little pop-up saying, you stupid fuck, you shouldn't click that. Right? Right off the bat, we can say, you clicked it, you're bad. We can say, oh, look, in this email, you should have seen that the domain name was misspelled. Right? We can give them nice educational things. And this is kind of things you should worry about. Right? We can give them an ability to report the phishing immediately. Right? If I think something is a phishing attempt, and I don't have a process within a company to report that phishing, right? What's my process? I'm going to send it over to IT. What's IT going to do? Ah, click it. Oh shit! Yeah, it's a phishing attempt. Don't do it. Too late. You already clicked. Right? So I can have the ability to report this in, and I can have a, and I don't have to worry about doing any kind of uh, forward it to my friend and all this other friend and all this kind of stuff. Right? It's really easy to upload data into these systems. So now when I go to my client, I say, don't give me an email list. Give me an Excel spreadsheet that has the month, the, the, the sex, the gender, you know, the, the gender, the location, the whatever, blah, 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 down the road. 
right? So that way I can, the more you give me, the more statistics I can build for you, right? And uh, we get graphing out of the ass. We can do any kind of graph you want to do, right? So you pick your partner. There's pros and cons of each. I work with multiple, so I don't have all my eggs in one basket. I think some do things better than others. Um, I just started having my communications with fish lines, so have you used them before? Or? Okay. Yeah, and you, but you need you need development stuff behind fishing frenzy. You need to throw templates on there and stuff. And the good thing is, once you're done, you got a good product. Yeah. Right. So you got to build it. I mean, so my my whole premise is you can go that route. You can roll your own, which is good. Not me. I'm lazy. Uh, so I'm going to do a little bit of a fast walkthrough in case you guys aren't familiar with it and what we can get out of these tools and working with the tools. Uh, and then one of the things that I, like I said before is uh, we can also use these tools to, to still do the popping, right? We, when we, we learn so much information about the users. We can do more later if we so choose. Uh, this is Fishline's little... First page. I don't go. I don't go down any too many pages of any one vendor, because I don't want them other vendors to see what other people do. But here you, you got this little campaign manager. Woohoo! We can build the campaign. You walk through your steps. You add your people in. You add all your stuff into it, right? And then you can start your campaign using their tools, right? Similarly with other products. This is Threat Sim. What kind of what kind of um, campaign you want to run? Right, we can do all kinds of stuff using these tools. So these tools give us, as a consultant, the ability to have that framework to use, and then we can leverage our knowledge of fishing, and education, and working with the clients to make that service a better service. Right, so we can, together with the, with the vendors, we can make a better service offering for our clients. Right, you get a whole a whole bunch of statistics. I left out what these were because they had client names in there, so I'm sorry. <laughs> I forgot. I'm like, oh, shit. Um, but we get some blue graphs, and we get some red graphs, and we get some green graphs. That's really important in reports, right? I think blue was the number of emails sent out, you know, open, clicked, invulnerable, stuff like that. So we can get a whole bunch of information about the users, right? And this is just one pop-up from ThreatSend. Right, so we hear, we know who, we know where, we know what they were vulnerable with. Right, so we have um, Adobe problems, and Flash problems, anything that was in Internet Explorer 8, 10. Um, we have whether or not they had egress coming out of their office or not, based on what we job was that we sent them to see what ports were coming out, stuff like that. Right. And I know who clicked on things and who didn't click on things. In this example, uh, I should have actually put one up there that had a had a click. But in this example, nobody actually um, put in credentials because it's all no there, right? But if 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 they had, I would know who put in their credentials into a into a phishing web page. So as an attacker, when we do our our fast, if it isn't an or engagement scope, right? We can then do the penetration testing of this, right? What am I going to do over here? Right? PDFs and, and flash. You know, I automatically have an attack vector to go after these people on, right? If they had clicked it and they entered the credentials, I know I now know who to do credential harvesting on. Right? And you can get those repeat fenders. If you see somebody clicking it all the time and putting their credentials in all the time, and it happens, <coughs> then you know that your credentialing email from SPF is going to the, are going to them. Right? I, what I, I want to end on, this is my last slide, so I want to end on one thing. It's together, 
us as consultants that know understand the security side of the house and, and the phishing side of the house, working with these vendors can take us to the next step and offer our clients what they truly need, and that's statistics and stuff on everything. Now, I, I use the term fast because I don't think this is a one-time shoot and forget, right? This is not an engagement where you, you engage with a consultant, you pay them X amount of dollars, and you say, fish me, right? This is something where you go to a consultant and you say, I want you to fish me from now until next year, and we'll re-up our contract next year. And I want fishing at least twice a month, right? And I want reports generated twice a month or more, right? However you want to work that in. This is a continuous effort, right? And what the continuous effort gives us is the statistics that we need to make it better, right? Now we can sell the San Francisco office because they never listen and make it somebody else's problem, right? If Baltimore and DC are click are okay, San Francisco is not, sell them. It's a little extreme, but I've seen worse things happen. Questions, comments? That's all I have. Okay, so that is, that's going to factor on a lot of things, right? What my pricing model to my clients are depends on the route I'm going. If I went to a fishing printing route here, like this gentleman did, and I built it on my own, I have investment hours into a product. So I need to recoup that money, and then I need to get more money to keep the development going, right? If I use one of the vendors, I have to pay the vendor. Each vendor has their own pricing model, right? So we have the ability to say, as a vendor, they could say it's going to cost you a thousand dollars to fish 250 people a month, <coughs> right? Now you have to say for that 250 dollars, or for the 250 people, that one thousand dollars a month, that equates out to twelve thousand dollars a year. Then you need your profit on top of that. So let's say you're cheap and you're going to charge them 20 grand, right? 12,000 is going to the vendor. You're going to pocket 8,000 for doing the reports, right? Can your, the, can a 250 person company afford that? I would say, yeah. If you went in there and you said it's going to cost you 75, 100 K because you're greedy and you're only paying the vendor 12 K, yeah, I say a 250 company is not going to bite off on that. So it's really, a, it's really a scale. Right? Some of these vendors will want you to sell their product to the client. Right? They don't want to go through you to get to the client. They want a client to buy it. So they want the client to buy it directly. Right? And what they'll usually do in, the, in that scenario, they'll usually give you points, give you 20% of the sale. Right? Now, I use Coca Cola as my example, right? Coca Cola buys Fish Me as an example. It doesn't preclude you from running the scans for Coca-Cola, right? You would get 20% or whatever the, 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 your, your contractor rate with Fish Me was for that sale to Coca-Cola. And then you would have to have a service agreement with Coca-Cola to do the fishing for them. And that's doable. So it's basically like them buying the product and I'm running the product for them and I'm giving them my expertise. So I'm sorry, but there's no distinct answer. On a, on a small company, I would probably do it the find a vendor that maybe pay per month and then charge up from there. On that note, do you know of any uh, vendors that uh, provide white labeling? What do you mean by white label? White. So they they rebrand it. Yeah, all of them do. When, 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 when uh, well, I don't know about all of them because I haven't used all of them. So I know that all, all my templates and stuff like that, I can do whatever I want with them, so sending out of the, from the folks that I've used. But if you wanted to, I know that there are some out there that say, instead of it being fish line, it's, you know, Raymond fishing, right? It's all going to be, it's all going to depend on your relationship with that vendor. And I would submit that the more the vendor is getting out of the, that chunk, the better off they are going to have you rebranded. Okay.
Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So it, well, I hate to keep saying, oh, it all depends. That's my answer to everything. It depends. Um, you can tell I'm a consultant, can't you? Um, so the one advantage of doing a, a fast type system is when, when they click something, I can send them to a link of my choice, right? It could be an error message, right? It could be a link to training. So they immediately, when they get fished, when I click on that Chick-fil-A uh, link that comes to me, there's a video, there's a, a, a game, there's a quiz, there's a, uh, a PDF to read, there's whatever. So they're getting immediate training out, out, of, the, out of the actual phishing itself as well. But also on top of that, you can offer your own, right? And before you write that contract on what you will do for security and awareness training, I would say do a phishing exercise, right? This will give you a complete understanding of what the landscape looks like. And don't do one. Do a campaign of several emails, right? So you know that going in that statistically 50% of the company clicks on a regular basis versus 2%. That will help you kind of get where your training goes. Uh, is there, uh, do any of the platforms have any uh, contestants or the that would be up to the company to, to enforce. I showed little the little fish me uh, button, and you can click on reporting. And if it's a fish me email that comes in, if it was from the phishing service, and you click the fish me button, it will say congratulations, you caught us. So you get a positive confirmation. If it's another fish, and you send it to there, you'll get a generic message saying. Thank you. We'll look into this. <coughs> so you get positive confirmation. You can encourage a company to do anything you want, right? I like Chick Fil A. Give me Chick Fil A every time I don't click on a Chick Fil A link, and I'm not clicking anything, right? Give me donuts, and there's plenty of donuts left, by the way. Give me donuts, and I'm not clicking on anything, right? Can you tell I'm food motivated? Could use it alcohol too. It doesn't matter. Any other questions? Well, thanks, everybody.